Now, Young Money is, you know, more looked at as Lil Wayne's label. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's also with, with Cash Money and everybody. It's, you know, kind of tied together. Mm-hmm. You know, how involved was, like, Baby and Slim with with Young Money? How, how much were they around? It was around a lot. Um, when I first got around Young Money, we used to record in Atlanta a lot. We used to record in this studio named Hot Beats. And we recorded, we used to be in there a lot. And that was kind of like uh, Wayne and Young Money. It's like Wayne and his crew, his peoples, his assistant, his road manager, and whatever artist he bringing around at that time. Uh, and then when we got, when we started being in Miami more, or when I started being in Miami more, they probably was already in Miami, but I used to come be in Atlanta and go back to New York and fly back and forth. So when I started being in Miami more, that's when I would notice, oh, you know, Hit Factory got this side and that side. And Birdman would be in this room and Wayne would be in the next room. So it's like you'll be in there, Wayne would be in there smoking, recording some shit, and then he'll go in the room, Stunner was good. What you working on? Blah, blah, blah. Stunner be in there, he got all his homies, cash, no, cash money, the older dudes that you used to see in the videos and all that, they still with him. They in there and Wayne got his younger crews, Mac Main and Streets and Gutter and me. And so they was involved, but he never really like, it was more like whatever you want to do, Junior. Like I used to see that shit. Like Wayne would be in the studio all night just recording shit. Birdman ain't never come in, turn the beat down. Like I think right there, you need to you need to change that blood. I think right there, you could have said that better. Blood. Like no, nah, it wasn't none of that. It was this is the album. Mm-hmm. And then Birdman take it. This is the album. That's what we doing. He take he give it to Birdman. Birdman take it up to Universal just like that. This is what we doing. This is the single and we want to shoot the video next week. I've seen that. I will say that. Wayne is... Wayne taught me how to be your own machine to push the machine. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't got to tell Wayne to go to the studio. Same thing with me. My boys will tell you, like, Wayne... Young Money will tell you, when I first came around, I used to bring my laptop with speakers, an inbox... You understand what I'm saying? Not like you could just go to Pro Tools on your desktop. No, an inbox to plug that bitch up to the computer. Speakers, laptop, mic stand, Newman, just to bring it. Because I know he'd be getting us rooms and shit. And some days we'd be in a, we might go to a city and be there for two, three days. And I mean, he might get a studio session. He might not. But I record myself. So I remember Gutter Gutter was like, yo, you be recording? Like, I'd be like, yeah, we could do a song right now. Cause I was so used to recording at the crib and just doing shit. I bring my shit on the road with me, you know? And from seeing that, Wayne saw me doing that. And I went on the bus like the next day, Tez had bought him all that shit and he learned how to record himself. And that's what changed shit. That's what changed shit because then well, I don't need a studio session. Get me all this, all that shit, get that shit for my condo now. Now the extra room in the condo is a studio so that you record all day and then go to the hit factory at night and finish that shit up. It's like a machine. It's like, damn, when you go to sleep. I remember one time, I probably said this story before, but if I didn't, we're gonna say it right here. I remember one time Wayne was like, well, we was in the studio in the hit factory, and it was probably one of them days I'm just, uh, I'm tired, man. Like, damn, pff, tired. He's like, what you tired from? He's tired, bro. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I'm just tired. I'm just, he said, yeah, but what you, hold on for a minute. Turn the music down. What you so tired from? What you what you did today that made you tired? And I'm in my mind. I'm just like, I don't think it's that serious, bro. You don't just put me on the spot. Like I'm just tired, bro. I'm just a little. But it's like, yeah, but why? You can't tell me what made you tired. You just tired. You ain't do shit productive. You ain't make nothing out of your day. But you tired. You sitting here, and then you got the nerve to tell me you tired out of all people. You telling me you tired? Never told him I was tired again. <laughs> Even if I am tired, you better find something in you. If he could find it, and if Birdman could find it, and he older than all of us, he been doing this shit way longer than all of us. You better find it. I don't know what little twist and little Chucky gonna be, but they got energy, and you don't know what they gonna be. You don't know what this gonna be. So 
you better find some fucking energy. You know what I'm saying? And just shit like that, you just, you learn shit, man. Like if you around, a nigga can't tell me they spent 10 years around Kobe Bryant and they ain't learn nothing. Can't tell me you been around Jay-Z for 10 years and you ain't learned. And I don't give a fuck if he ain't never put your album out. You ain't never learned nothing. You ain't learned how to stay afloat without him putting his album out. Dre, how many cribs I had in Miami? I'm not even looking at him. How many albums did I put out? <laughs> yeah. I ain't even looking at my man. He said, I had like three. Ask him how many albums I put out. Don't even know. You know why? Because I figured out a way to live on the 48th floor. Bayshore, on Bayshore Drive over the water, no album out. Because if I could go to Paris, Switzerland, and London, and we could, Dre, we go over there, we make us a quick 20, 25 thou. You, you take five, you take seven, so I ain't got 10 when we go across the border and they'll make me fill out them papers. Once we figured that out, you ain't got to put no album out. What I need an album for? My rent paid. My, I bought my BMW. Tiger put me on to the shit out in Cali where you don't need no, <laughs> you don't need no, uh, no credit. A word? This is where all the drug dealers and shit go. I'm going to. Flatbed my BM back to Jersey. I don't care if it ain't the newest year. I don't got no note. Mm. And now flatbed it to Miami. Once you figure it out, bro, do you care if you don't have an album out? If you figured it out, I never, I never came out and said. Birdman and them owe me money. I never came out and said Lil Wayne owe me money. Figure it out. You're a hustler. And you you seen when Wayne was in a jam and how he had to figure it out. That was part of me leaving. It was part of me leaving Young Money to see a nigga got problems that's way bigger than my album. This nigga fighting for 50 mil. You fighting for an album in the streaming era. You know what I'm saying? He did all he could do, bro. It's up to you now. You gotta go stand on your own ten toes and figure it out, Mills. This nigga got real life shit he going through. Like, to ask him to worry about when you coming out with an album at this time? You know what I'm saying? I gotta figure it out, bro. And, and that's what I did. Now, at one point, there was like a lot of rumors or, you know what I'm saying? You would see little things about Lil Wayne going to Rockefeller with Jay-Z. And then, yeah. you know, a few years ago, uh, Lil Wayne said in an interview that Jay-Z offered him, like, 175000 to sign. And, you know, they Oh, like kinda, back in the days? Yeah. I, I think I heard something like that. I think I was heard something like that. Was there any talks of that or anything? I don't or? know. I, I was, that, was before, that was before my Young Money uh, initiation. <laughs> so I don't really know about the, the specifics of that. But I did hear something about that, like, back in the days. Oh, okay. I did hear something about Jay was trying to sign him. Now, Wayne ends up going to jail. Yeah. Right in the middle of everything. Everything. You know, you guys are, everybody's taking off. Drake, Nikki. Yeah. You know, yeah. everything's going down. You know, what were those last days like before he had to turn himself in? It was some bullshit. It was some bullshit. I'm trying to figure out if, if we went to the Super Bowl. Around that time, I don't know. I know he took us all to the Super Bowl when it was in Miami. And I remember we went to a club one night, and he was supposed to be turning himself in in the morning. And I remember we party like crazy. Like, I still got pictures from that night. It was Wayne, Drake, Nikki, me, Mac, Gutter. Twist might have been in the club. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was all of us there. I remember at the end of the night, he went to the Maybach. And we was all giving him, because he was turning himself in in the morning. And we was all giving him dap, giving him hug, you know. Some of us was crying. You know, he trying to crack jokes and shit. And, you know, be all right, y'all got this, y'all got this. And and that was it. I mean, they took him to his crib, and he was getting ready to turn himself in in the morning. And I remember it was a weird feeling. And then when the morning came, they gave him more time. They, oh, did, they did something like that or extended his joint. So it's was like, damn, we was all ready for him to go in last night. We done got all these tears. I was, well, fuck it, at least he ain't got to go in yet. But it's like, damn, they prolonged it. He was like ready to, ready to go. But one of the big things I remember about when Wayne was locked up, I remember two things. Um, I remember when we did MTV Spring Break without him. 
I, I, I remember when we had to go to like Mexico or something without him. And this is when Drake was, he had best I ever had and Nikki was Nikki. So they was kind of like holding it down for us. They was like, the, they was the leaders of the pack. Even though we did Every Girl in Bedrock and all that, Drake was becoming Drake. Like Nikki was becoming Nikki and Wayne wasn't there. So we was kind of riding, they, they, they coattail. We did our Young Money set, we did interviews and all that. But I remember it was just so weird not having Wayne there to like coach us. It was like, they set all the cheers up. It was like three cheers and three cheers. And it's like Nikki, Drake, Mac, or Nikki, Drake, Tiger, me, Gutter, Mac, Twist. And we just all sitting there ask, answering questions. And it just, just felt so weird, you know, but it didn't last forever. But it, I guess that was a time for us to grow and understand what it would be like if he wasn't here to hold our hand. You know what I'm saying? So I remember that. And I remember I got into some shit. Uh... The, what it was was irrelevant but I remember he called me from jail and I remember I was like who the fuck is this and he's like yo this tune I'm looking like you like you like he was like look I heard about that shit that happened man don't get that shit no attention and I was like alright and he was like alright you cool everybody cool and he just went into some other shit but it was something that was on the internet at that time and he was calling me to tell me, don't give it no attention. Like, that should have be gone in like three, four days. But if you give it attention, it'll last for three or four years. And I'm gonna be like, hmm, cool. For my man to call me from, from Rikers? Not, I called, like, like, what number is this? You know what I'm saying? Like, you took the, that shit must have really been on his mind to be like, yo, bro, listen, I'm just put you on some game right now. So, by the time he came home from jail, that's when I had moved officially to Miami. Because in my mind, I'm like, fuck it, when he come home from jail, if you right there, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could be in the mix of shit more than being in New York and having to fly back and do all of that shit. But when Wayne went to jail, that definitely put a damper on shit with the whole Young Money thing. But it made us, it made us understand that we could get a lot of shit done on our own now. Everything don't have to just go through Wayne. Like people might want to direct the video for you, you know? Like when Wayne went to jail, I remember I did Green Goblin with Chris Brown. Like got a director, had a barber there, paid him for a few hours, asked Breezy what size sneaker and jeans you wear, because I got a scene where I want us to run through the alley with the paint on our face. You mind putting the paint on your face, Breezy? All right, cool, but Came, to, I just rent two Winnebago's, I guess, one for me, one for Chris Brown, and you know, but if Wayne would have never went to jail, I probably would have never did that shit with Chris Brown. Not like that. You know, I remember calling Breezy like, yo, I want you to get on this song, I want you to rap. You want me to rap? Yeah, like the shit you did on Fan of a Fan with Tiger, I like that shit. Word. Hell yeah, kill that shit. He thought I wanted him to just sing. It's like, nah, I want you to do that other, like, cause I fuck with Breezy as a rapper when I first heard him. Knew him since he was young. It's like, kinda got a real flow. People was mad at me that I didn't get him to sing on the song. It's like, yeah, but I'm one of the first people that believed in him to be a rapper on their song. You know what I'm saying? And Wayne was locked up. But if he wasn't locked up, I might not have did that video and all that. I might have been waiting for Young Money to do it for me instead of putting my own money up to do it. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.